Welcome to Drunk Librarians, where we talk about all things booze and books. Each episode, we take turns reviewing and summarizing what we've been reading recently. And beware of spoilers. So in each title, there will be which librarian is reviewing and summarizing, and then the title of the book. So if you do not want to know spoilers, please do not listen. And our only rule of this podcast is no throwing up. Welcome to what I like to call the pre-show pre-game, where we give you a little bit of a rundown of what is supposed to happen on this week's episode before we start hitting the booze a little too hard. So this week we are we have Librarian A, who's going to be telling us all about Delia Owen's best-selling novel, Where the Crawdads Sing. If you've spent any time in a library in the past year or so, um, you've heard of it. You've got a holds list about 20 miles long for it. It is sweeping the nation by storm, and Librarian A is going to chat a little bit about it today on our episode. And to celebrate the marshland theme of the book, we are drinking some marshy margaritas because we're festive as fuck around here. So I will stop talking and I'm going to hand you over to the drunk librarians. God help you. Hope you have fun. And we'll see you at the end. What are we drinking? We're drinking cheap wine, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Cheap ass wine. Cheap wine. And then that's it. <laughs> yep. Got it. Um, but we did make a uh, rum cake. We did make a rum cake. And um, whose episode is this? I guess it's mine. It's your episode. So Librarian A. This is Librarian A, and it's her episode. And so we started... With the marshy margarita bullshit, and then we did. that's just nothing gets us drunk quite it, like wine, so no. it always switches over. And, and wine, how, wine is where it is. And wine's where it's at. Wine's how, how it's at? How where, it's at? Where it's at? I don't know. If it's five dollars, it gets the job done. It does. So we drink it. I like it. It's very good. It's, it's all good. It's pretty, and we've had a lot. So this is why wine is good. Wine is very good. Wine is so good. And also why wine is good, because work fucking sucks. Yeah. Work fucking sucks. Hey, where's my password? Excuse me, I need to get into Excuse my email. Me? Okay, sure. Is it a Yahoo, a Gmail, a where are we going? It, no, I don't have Gmail. I have email. It's an actual me? conversation that's happened. I have an email. An email, not a Gmail. What's your email address? I don't know. Nobody knows their email. Yeah. Nobody knows their password for Nobody anything. knows their password. And nobody's willing to help. And, you know, I don't really care what you call the library, the library, library. I don't care as long as you come to the library. Yes, my cat is taking a shit right now. Oh, no, I was about to sneeze, and that's why I was trying to get away from the microphone. Oh. Get you stopped talking in case you were saying something important, but then no. the sneeze went away. So it'll pop up unexpectedly later on. Something to look forward to. No, I'm not saying anything important. So, surprise, surprise. <laughs> God damn it. Sorry. I'm being sassy. I excel at it. So, Hi, I'm Librarian B, by the way. We haven't <gasps> met before. We haven't done that. Of course not, because Do we it had again. 12 bottles of wine. Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm Librarian B. Um, I'm not hosting this episode, but I'm here for moral support and snarky commentary as needed. Um, and in fact, when not needed, it just comes out naturally, and I apologize in advance. Um, to you and to Librarian A, mm -hmm. who has to put up with it. Yes, I am Librarian A, and I think I have more. I have had more wine than Librarian B right now. Really? Because I'm thinking I've had more wine. <laughs> I think I've had more wine because I had all that beer before you got here. I can't speak to what you did before I arrived. Okay, well, I've had more alcohol beverages. Well, you had a really hard time saying beverages, so I'm thinking that's true. Beverages. I've had. I wonder how many glasses of wine I've had since I've um, been here. It's been a lot. Well, we've divided two liters. So a liter each. <laughs> <laughs> math, right? Is that math? Maybe we shouldn't publish that. <laughs> how much? 
It's a bit a lot. We love cheap wine. Love cheap wine. And speaking of uh, growing up in a shanty house. 12 minutes ago, yeah, we were. Yeah, yeah. it's a... We'll bring it back. Six months ago. Yeah, um, so speaking of growing up in a shanty house, I'm going to talk to you about the fucking bestseller. Where are the crawdads sing? God damn, do you have to? Actually, I'm curious because I've not read it because I hate reading popular adult fiction. So I have no idea what happens. So actually, yeah, tell me so I don't have to bother. Well, I have to tell you this first. I fucking hated this bullshit. I am actually surprised that I finished it. Well, consider me titillated. I cannot (laughs) wait to hear more. I have to tell you that I was bamboozled. No. Yes. I know this is shocking. Bamboozled? I was bamboozled. Thank you. Oh, no. I was told this was a mystery because there's a dead body involved. Which is naturally why you jumped up. It was. Um, Librarian A loves a good dead body. Gosh, I love a true, I love like a good, a good murder with all respect to whoever involved. I'm sorry. Um, Not the time and place, but, (laughs) but yes, I love a good mystery novel. And I was told, oh, there's a dead body. You might like it. However, I fucking hated this bullshit, and I'm actually surprised that I finished it. But you did finish it. I did. I did, and I actually listened to the audiobook. Okay. And um, Cassandra Campbell, I think it was Cassandra Campbell. Oh, fuck, I hope I'm saying that right. Um, She did a great job. I just have this huge thing about uh, people who aren't Southern doing a Southern accent and she is not Southern, and she tried. She tried with the maws and paws and, and Piggly Wigglies, and oh. I, I couldn't get I couldn't get on board. I'm sorry. I do hate when people are really bad at accents. So maybe if you read the actual book, you might you might not have that problem. That's true. I mean, that could have been a big part mm-hmm. of like, oh, it just takes you mm-hmm. out of the story so much to go, that's not how people sound. But she is good. I've, I've listened to her in other audiobooks, so... So if you're into audiobooks... She is good. But this one I just have a weird personal vendetta against. Anyway. So, so, as for the story itself, was it good, bad, ugly? If you're coming into this thinking, oh, there's a dead body, it's going to be good. No. Turn away, run away. However, if you're thinking a nice, with a a coming-of-age story with weird scenes in it you might like it with a lot of description just a lot of description coming of age i would actually put it in the ya section the young adult section okay so less murder more finding yourself fuck yes okay it's well finding yourself that's gross but i'm here with wine so i guess you can tell me more if that is your thing you will like it however it's not, it's not so. my thing I'm, it's not my thing, so. It doesn't sound like there's a ghoul or specter in sight, so I'm not interested. But you can tell me about it anyway. I will. I shall. Please do. We open. That's our podcast cat, by the way. If you hear... <laughs> he's, he's throwing a bit of a tantrum, so if you hear a little... He's, he's not like getting him. attention right now. It's okay. Life will go on. For us, anyway. <laughs> Maybe not for him. <laughs> so we open. In the marsh of North Carolina. South Carolina? North Carolina. North, North Carolina? Picture it. Trees. The marsh. There's like those hangy, weepy of trees. A Carolina in the 1950s. There's a tree wearing a poodle can skirt. You, can you see it? There's, there's an alligator? Because there's a lot of fucking description. And if you read the book, you will see it. I, I, I see a tree and you water. Okay. Is there a gator? I feel like there should there be a gator. There may be a gator. Fuck yeah, I love If that makes gators. it more interesting. It does. Now I'm hooked. <laughs> There's a story about the gator? So we open with Kaya. Kaya is our main character. Okay. She is abandoned at a young age. Um, she has kind of a large family, but her mother is the maybe the first one to leave. I'm not exactly sure. But her brother explains to her that since her mother left... In her gator shoes. Like fucking Crocs? Her gator shoes? What the fuck is that? They're comfy for the walk, 
hijacking. Oh, hijacking? She put on her Crocs. Hitchhiking. She put on her Crocs to go hitchhiking. Mama ain't coming back. That's a practice like how it goes. So then the brother leaves, sister leaves, whoever the fuck is left, they leave. And it leaves her with her drunk father. Oh, that sounds like a good mix. And she was really close to her mom, and the dad's like, fuck this bitch, and they burn all of her shit. And there's this nice memory of her dancing with her mom to this radio, and the dad is like, fuck this bitch. She left. All your family left. I'm burning this. Okay, so a good, stable, healthy household oh, environment. Oh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Um, yeah, to exactly. grow up in. Is she a kid? or I'm getting the vibe that she's a kid because she's living with her that is alcoholic pa. She's like, I don't know, 10, 10 around there. She's Holy young. shit. She's young. She's pretty young. Fucking yeah. dense. Um, what we in the biz call a baby. A baby. So, hmm. eventually, she thinks there's this relationship that her and her pa... Mm-hmm. can repair and they go fishing and she's like oh this is the, this is what I ever wanted and we're gonna be a family and he fucking leaves he leaves her too wow so she's on her own do you at age like i don't know 10 12 i don't know just wow get, just, just be like, on the hmm. same page with me here okay drunk dad goes eh tired of being a single yeah. parent for Fuck five it. minutes so i guess mm-hmm. i'll just abandon my small child in the middle of a fucking marsh and call yeah. it a day she um she has to buy groceries obviously she has to like care for herself does she have money she's 10 she does have money that her paul left her however she does not know how to count money What's and she? she goes to the piggly wiggly oh, and she tries to buy some things and the cashier is like oh here i'll count this for you and she's really nice and, oh, that's and good. does that for her so that's really good really good so the town knows about her and they call her swamp trash and she's kind of not <sighs> okay pause okay. for five seconds of uh-huh. your time if uh-huh. i may 10 year old lives out in the swamp comes into town to try and buy groceries can't fucking do it so the nice cashier lady helps mm-hmm. her out whole town knows that she's out in the swamps by herself and they're mm-hmm. like that swamp trash definitely not a child that we should be concerned about and maybe help take care mm-hmm. of no we'll just leave her to get eaten by gators and mosquitoes in the marshes of a carolina Exactly. And okay. actually, there is this group of popular kids on her way to the Piggly Wiggly, and um, they call her Swamp Trash, and they're like, what is this bitch doing here? She's a weird, and all of this bullshit. And this teacher comes up, and she's like, oh, and be nice. And be nice to the Swamp Trash. And then she goes on her way to the Piggly Wiggly, unable to count money. Am I legally f- allowed to fight some 10-year-olds? Can I fight a gang of 10-year-olds? Um, no, fictionally, I think you could imagine it. So if you want to imagine fighting these 10-year-olds um, in the story, yeah. I will. Please excuse me. Keep talking and okay. I'm going to go fight some Good. piggly wiggly teenagers. They're not even teenagers. They're 10. They're Jesus. not. Jesus. They're not. They're babies. So she doesn't really know how to do anything. And that there is this um, person of color, family of color. Mm-hmm. Um, owners of a store, I think, I'm sorry, wine, and they really help her out. They are... These people are solid. They are able to sell what she catches in the marsh and everything. She has a boat. She's able to catch things. Oh, um, my God. You mean some people actually take a fucking interest in this infant and help yes, her make a yes. way in life? Which is well, good. It's good. That's good shit. And um, there is this family friend, Tate. Uh, that's and a terrible they, name. No offense you know, to the Tates listening. Yes. But Jesus. Um, they end up falling in love. And I just Gross. Wanna, I just want to put this in there that the story actually bounces back and forth from um, Kaya growing up, her life, to current, which might be the 1960s. Okay. Um, maybe later. Um, because there's this dead body found. Ooh, oh, that's the infamous by, dead body that by, lured you in. Yes, by a water tower, and I thought, oh yes, a dead body. I'm Murder so interested. Mystery. Okay, well, just hold on. Hold your okay. horses. My horses are held. Good. Nay. <laughs> <laughs> there. Where was I? You were talking about Tate. So he was a family friend. Um, she. Kai had an older brother, and I think that he was kind of a friend of his. And they start dating, and they are very 
into each other and very into the marsh. During all of this, there is a lot of description of the marsh, of the feathers and the birds. And can you see it? The birds and in the marsh and the in the in the water in the clouds. I'd like to stop seeing it now. <laughs> I'd like to stop seeing the marsh. I'm I th- doing my hands I, you so are. you can see it. I feel you're like not, I'm getting bit by mosquitoes just sitting here. You're not listening and visioning. <laughs> I'd like to stop now. Is there a skunk ape in the swamp? No, sorry, no. What the fuck's we'll, the we'll, point? We'll get into that later. We're getting into a skunk ape? Probably in a later episode oh that you read about. I sure okay. the fuck hope so. So they're both into the marsh. They're both into each other, but they don't really get it on because he's older, and I think she's a teenager at this point, maybe 15. He's 18. Mm. Yeah, it's a little weird. Mm. And they both really love the marsh, okay? They're, like, totally into it. They love the description and the the feathers and shit. So he eventually leaves her, too. He abandons her to go to college. Oh, oh, oh. He goes so he to just college. goes off to college. He goes to college to learn more about the marsh, to be able to help it. And there's, like, this whole background thing about getting rid of the marsh and building, I don't know, fucking oh, okay. skyscrapers. Or but that's I'm cool. He's so obsessed with the marsh that he's he actually is. pursuing that. He so is. he's going into, like, biodiversity So, in the meantime, stuff. Yeah. in the meantime, Kaya's like, fuck this dude. He abandoned me. Like, all of my family abandoned me. I'm sure the girl's got some abandonment issues she, at this yeah. point in time. So she just dives into the marsh, and she loves it. She starts dating this guy named Chase. Jesus. And he was part of the popular group, like, oh, fuck it, swamp trash, and do 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 And so a, a they start charming, dating. upstanding civilian. Love it. Obviously. And there's actually a point in the story where she's like, you know, I think that there's a bet on who could get it on with the marsh trash. So, who can fuck the marsh trash, obviously, is what is going on right now. Can we, as a species, finally get rid of the making bets on fucking people trope that we've got going on? Because it is trash. It (sighs) psychologically damages lots of people. And it's fucking trash. Can we stop now? There is a song on board with that. Right now. Is okay, it? so let's get some tickets to no librarian A. Tell me more. Who is she? There is some song that I can't think of right now because of wine. And it says, fuck who you want, fuck who you like. Fuck yeah. Just do it. Okay. I mean, Works use protection, me. but whatever. But don't make fucking bets. That's, that's a dick ass Damn it, what's wrong with people? Anyway, back, it's back to the story. Sucky move. Back to the story. Um, she's really still into the marsh, and she's, um, doing sketches of feathers and birds and shit. I don't know. And she doesn't have Netflix. Let her have this. That's, like, half the fucking book. It's just a description of a shell and feather and shit. So if you took that out, it might actually be palatable? Uh, maybe. If there was more murder. Anyway, just my, just my take on it. Um, so she's, uh, she starts dating Chase, and, um, Chase is from a prominent family in the town. And they never go, they never be, they're never seen with each other. Okay. And she starts thinking like, you know, I want to be seen with you. I want to go to this dance and be a normal teenage girl Mm -hmm. and blah, blah, blah. And they've like totally got it on. And um, just remember, she did not get it on with uh, Tate. He was much older than her. How was. What's the age difference with Chase? Maybe Four or five years. But he was very strong. Like, okay, they got close to getting it on. But yeah, he was but, like, there's too yeah, much Tate, of an age Tate difference. Tate was an, a, technically, it was legally an adult. So that's. There's too much of an age difference. We're yeah, just, that's we're too different. Bad. So, so now there's Chase. Who is her age? Yeah, yeah, he's her age. And, uh, they're dating. And they get it on, and she's like, you know, I want to meet your parents. I want to meet your friends. I want to go to dances with you. No, and he says, no, 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 the marsh is our place. It's what is us, and I love you because you love the marsh, and da-da-da-da-da, bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. 
And she ends up going to town. Okay. One day. Um. Oh, before that, cut that out. I'm not going to. Um, she is doing all these sketches of birds and feathers and shit. And um, Tate comes back and he says, you know, you should write a book. You should illustrate it and write it. You know so much about this. And she's like, yeah, okay. Yeah, I fucking but I do, college boy. But I still hate you, really, because, you know, you abandoned me. And he says, you know, Tate, he's not who he says he is. And he's cheating on you. And she says, you know, even if he is doing what you said, it is not as bad as what you did to me because you abandoned me when Damn, all of girl. my family abandoned me. He went to college. Mm-hmm. He went to Jupiter to get more stupider. He did the opposite <laughs> of that. He went to college to get more he knowledge did. He did. about the Marsh, uh-uh. who was your first love. He abandoned her. Oh, damn. So she... Got with Chase and bang Chase, and Chase is like, you know, this is uh, like the swamp trash. Girl, this is our place. The, I love your swamp trash bullshit. You know, my friends, it don't matter. Blah, blah, blah. I don't know. So I don't yeah. I don't know. Anyway, I don't know if I picked this up. Um, For dramatic effect. <laughs> so then, um, out of character, Kaya goes into the Piggly Wiggly. Um, oh, that's not enough character, but she, she goes to the Piggly Wiggly and she's like buying stuff. And she's like, oh, you know what? I'm going to buy a newspaper. I never bought a newspaper. I'm going to fucking do it. Go for it, bitch. And she fucking buy, buys one. Buy a damn and newspaper. And she gets on her little boat and she goes, boo, 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 boo. And that is what boat sounds home. like. <laughs> and she goes back home and she starts reading it and it says, Chase is engaged to some blonde bitch that she saw him with. That sounds like that was written with the highest journalistic integrity. (laughs) Chase is engaged to some blonde bitch. Headline. Headline, ladies and gentlemen. And she's like, what the fuck is this bullshit? My boyfriend's marrying someone? What? He's marrying someone, and not even to mention that Tate was right. And she pushed him away. She pushed Tate away. Not even to mention, she threw shit at him. Whenever Tate came and was like, he's like, cheating on you, she was like, fuck you, boy. I'm throwing shit at you. Throw it, throw it. I'm going to ask, I'm going to ask for a slight ca- clarification. Excuse <laughs> Is she throwing shit at him or throwing mm. shit at him? Not actual shit. Okay, that's what I mean. She's like throwing more shit at him. She's oh, like, so like, here, this and this. Sand and boats and alligators. I'll and throw this feathers. at you. Here's a frog or something. I don't know. Cat. Fucking. <laughs> Hi, kitty. Boop. I booped his come nose. Here. He wants up here. <laughs> Do you want to come record a podcast? He does. You can record a podcast with us. Reach down, get him. Oh, no, no. Where he going? He's gone. He's gone. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, ladies and gentlemen, he's gone. He jumped like a little, mm-hmm. like a little horse. So before the cat, where was I? I don't know. Oh yeah, she threw more shit at him. Yes, yeah, so it was more shit, not actual shit. Yes. So with uh, Chase, she uh, confronts him about the cheating and she's like how could you do this to me you're engaged with someone is this why you didn't want me to come to dance and shit with you oh god damn that is exactly why he was like nah baby the marshes are this place. is our place don't want to let my actual fiance know i'm cheating on her exactly that poor bitch doesn't have any idea what's going on no, she has no idea there's no paper saying your yeah, fiance is fucking mm-hmm. the marsh trash yep so so she confronts chase about the cheating yeah she is the other woman this is not bodewell and it's near the water tower and wait a second i didn't mention the water tower you did i did the water tower with the dead body okay why does make it work so wait that one Ooh, i know what's happening now by the water tower she confronts chase about the cheating Mm mm-hmm and he's he's a dick about it. This dick named Chase is a dick about it. Shocking. Dicks Shockingly. And um, he tries to rape her. Whoa, 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 whoa. What? Chase 
she confronts Chase mm-hmm. about the cheating, and Chase Chase Chase, ra- Chase tries to rape her, mm-hmm. and she gets away. She runs Good. away, and she gets away on her boat. And the next thing, the next day, the police find Chase's body, and they say it fell from the water tower. Oh. So also during this time, she has published a book, maybe more than one sketches and information about the marsh oh. so she's able to fix up her shack that she she's has lived become in a professional lady she's making bank off her books mm-hmm. but you have to remember that she raised herself from a very she young did. age yeah. she doesn't really know how to interact with people really yeah it would just think about how she threw shit at tate yeah okay so she's she's making a name for herself she wrote these books um However, when Chase's body is found, she is the first suspect because Chase is up there. Chase's mother mm-hmm. sees the body and she says, "Where is where's is necklace?" And the police are Oh, I'm sorry, the police. The um sheriff's deputies, sheriff's uh-huh. deputies, I don't know what the fuck. Um they say well, what necklace? He was then found with a necklace. And she said, no, the swamp trash made him the shell necklace. Where is it? Oh. But his body didn't have he it. He didn't have a necklace on his corpse. The mom said he never took it off. Ever. Ever took it off, ladies and gentlemen. So, they arrest Kaya. They arrest okay. Kaya for the murder. And there's this big thing about her going to see this book publisher... Um, getting on a train or a bus or something and it messing with the timeline of the murder. Okay. Um, that was a big part of it. And her lawyer was also like, okay, are you convict? Are you convicting her because of her reputation of being swamp trash or because of the evidence? Oh, he's calling it up. Yes, he is. And in the meantime, the family that had helped her um, are there in the courtroom. Okay. And so is Tate. Okay. And they are, the jury is deliberating, and it's very intense and everything. And she's found not guilty. Ooh. So she's not guilty. They don't have any actual evidence. They're just like, Absolutely. you live in the marsh. And, you know, her, her lawyer had a good point. Are yeah. you actually convicting her because of the evidence, which there wasn't any, yeah. really? Or because of her reputation of not knowing how to deal with people because she raised herself in the yeah. swamp. I'm so, oh, in the marsh. In the marsh. Get sorry. it right. I am so Let's sorry. try for factual accuracy yes. while we're smashed. <laughs> so, um, her and Tate live a happy life. Oh, They live a happy life. Oh, gross. I think, yeah. Um, she is, she dies in her boat. As she would have wanted it. In her early age of, I know, she was probably in her 50s, I think. Oh my God. If I remember correctly, she actually dies early. Hmm. And Tate finds her, and she, of course, like you said, died doing what she loved. She was in her boat, boat. looking at the marsh, and she loved it. And so going through her things, um, he finds this kind of loose spot in the floor. And he lifts it up. He lifts it up after she's dead. Uh Uh-huh. And he finds Chase's necklace. (gasps) The bitch did it. The bitch did it. The bitch did it. The bitch did it. Oh, hell yeah. So I was actually, I was a little surprised because I actually thought Tate did it. I thought that Tate killed Chase, but... But she did it, and you know what? DIY murder. I'm into it. After what he did, after what he, he tried it. to do for he deserved after it. After what he tried to do for her, it's fucking do to after what he tried to do to her. Thank you. Got it that time. Thank you. Um, he fucking deserved it. Yeah. So, yeah, come on. so all in all, okay, I finished the book. There are worse books. Um, there are better. I'm sorry. Uh, there are better books. Uh, it sounds like it. There are better books that I did not finish. But I finished this one just to see what the fuck the hype was about. I have to say, I and, I think of this a lot when people 
because I knew you were doing this title, and every time, because the holds list is about 20 miles long oh, for it. There's so many people and who want to every read Every time it. somebody comes in like, oh, I can't believe it's finally my turn, I'm like, I can't wait to find out if this is actually decent or not. I'm always really curious, and everyone I've talked to is like, oh, you know, it was, it was, they either loved it or it was okay. I did not like it. I absolutely and really, did I, not. It, it's funny because I've heard... So many people, when talking about it, are like, oh my god, it's life-changing. It's amazing. It's, it's the best book her, ever written. Her so, prose is amazing. It's beautiful. No, I don't I don't like that shit. Well, I don't like it. But I mean, I guess I could see that. If prose is your jam, it sounds like half okay. the book was description. It really was. It so really was. I don't I don't like a lot of description. I like I like clues and I like figuring out who did it. And I like I like being surprised, and that might be why I didn't absolutely hate the book, was because I was either thinking that she or Tate killed Excuse Chase. me, I'd like to point the defendant to the beginning of the podcast, what? where I have on the transcript oh, here shit. it said, I fucking hated this book. Damn it, I fucking hated this book! Do you have anything to say? So, I think I might have been hyped, though. Yeah, and that's true. I mean, if this was just a book you pulled off the shelf, it would have been like... It, this it's one, okay. whatever. You know, it might have been okay. But I think it was the fact but, of everywhere you look, you see the book, see and everybody it. goes, this is the best book I've ever read. I've never read anything as good as this book. But I think that's funny because you compare it to young adult fiction, which has such a weird stigma like, oh, that's for, that's for those teeny boppers. That's what the teeny boppers read. There's you nothing know, in it for me. And really, that's what adults want to read. There is one scene that I left out. Oh, God. There is one scene I left out, and it, oh my fucking god, I I hated it. Well, now you have to tell me. <sighs> okay, so 30 minutes into this podcast. Um, what happened? There is a scene where Kaya gets her period in front of Tate. And they're, like, not, not really dating at this point. He uh-huh. teaches her how to read and everything. Well, that's good. Reading is a useful but skill. But she has this really big crush on him. And she's just like, <sighs> bowed over. Bowed over with these cramps and she's bleeding. And she doesn't know what to do. And so, here comes Tate. Like, hey, you know, my uh, my sisters went through this. I don't know. Is this a fucking, a fucking after school special? I know what's going on with you. You know, it's a, you're a woman now. Dear Kaya, you've become a woman. You're a woman now. Your life has forever changed. And I fucking cringed so hard that I got my goddamn period <laughs> when I read this shit. I almost put the book down. I didn't even finish it. Oh, my God. But I did. I did. I finished it. It was just that that scene. That scene, I just... What I do said, you think? What do you think? Just for funsies here. What? what do you think was going through Delia Owens' mind? Like, get into the mind of the author where she's like... Ah, I'm creating this whole world and all these characters. You yeah. know what would really cement the the plot of the novel? Kaya gets her fucking period in front of her crush. Ha ha ha. And like it goes you through know, editing and nobody's like, this doesn't add shit to the story except for secondhand embarrassment. What, you know, what's the point? What's, I think there might be something wrong with me because I've read... I read uh, some Stephen King fucked up bullshit. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, this is fucking awesome. You remember, and then you remember I read, in Misery where, like, she, like, well, clubs no. his foot and the blood goes all over the wall? I used to, I was in junior no. high and I made everybody read that passage. There's, like, two pages mm. where she's got him, like, Annie Wilkes has him, like, cl- like strapped to the bed and she, like, clubs his foot. But, like, something happens and there's blood all over the walls and, like, 8th grade librarian B was like, this is the fucking shit right here. This is amazing. And I was like, guys, did you read this? This is so visceral. This is radical. And they were like, would you like to go talk to the guidance counselor? (laughs) (laughs) Like, that shit I can dig. This is like, what? But I read a pet cemetery. That's good shit right there. And I may talk about this in a future podcast. Please I'm not do. gonna go I'm not gonna go way into it. But that shit I've read that book. I can actually contribute to oh, that conversation. That shit is fucked up. Yeah, and, it is. You know, I like it. It's not fucked up in this sense. It's is that weird up. that no. I think that Stephen King is less fucked up than a period thing? Well, 
society probably contributes to that a little bit. But here's it the may, thing. It may be because, like, the whole demon ghost thing I don't believe in. But periods are real fucking shit. Real and shit that's right embarrassing. Here. And I don't know. I just think that ghouls and specters and ghouls. monsters and demons and shit are more fun. Lincoln's more fun to talk about. It is more fun to talk about. You're like, hey, here's this cr- here's this humding of an idea. What if I buried a dead thing and it came back to life, but evil? And I'm like, I'm intrigued. I want to know more. This Tell me more, weird, Steve. This is a weird plot twist, considering I like true crime. You do, yeah. You and like- I like I like ghost stories that because I know they're fake. Ghosts are real. No, ghosts are real. <laughs> Because I know demons and ghosts are fake. And, That's um, fake news right there. They're real shit. <laughs> Don't compare me to that. How dare you? <laughs> How fucking dare you? That's what you get for denying the truth. <laughs> but then I like true crime because it's true. But then I'm like, period shit. That's true. I hate it. I don't know. I don't make any sense. Sorry. Well, it's probably because the one you have to live through, which fucking sucks, and the other, you know, unless I kill you at some point, mm. which is always it's a possibility. It's possible. It's you possible. You know, you don't really have to live through. You don't have to. Let this go down as evidence. I'm just participating in a podcast <laughs> for funsies. Uh, I have proof right here. She wrote, Librarian A is a butt. That if that's not I did if that's not evidence I don't know what is that was after the third glass of wine <laughs> only the third I I wasn't well, counting okay had like twelve we we all we've in ra- all we've rambled on too long we have rambled it on wrap it up all in all if you like descriptions of marshes and swamps this is the book for you if you like YA awkward coming of age stories. This is for you. If you like mysteries, this may not be for you. If you like, you know, murder stuff, maybe not be for you. This is Librarian A signing out. <laughs> Thank you for listening. New episodes every second and fourth Friday. For more drunk librarian shit, follow us on Twitter at Drunk Lib Podcast. Please, Please drink, drink responsibly. responsibly. And remember, 